All right, let's talk about primer flash holes. So flash hole is going to be the little hole that's right there that uh, basically junctions or connects the uh, flash out of the primer with the powder that is inside your case. And it is obviously a lot smaller than the primer itself or else powder would come out. And, and if we're kind of looking at, a, at an up close view, it, it sort of looks like this. So here's your brass, and then you have, uh, this is your primer that's gonna go here, and then you have the flash hole, which is this whole area right here. And what can happen, because when brass is manufactured, as it moves along the assembly line, it gets rammed up uh, the bottom and drives this, this hole uh, down the middle. And there is often a die that manufacturers will bring down through the neck that kind of connect the, the punch with the top side. And for the most part, your good manufacturers, Peterson, Lapua, um, you know, ADG, some of these other ones, uh, they make really good flash holes, but none of them are perfect because they aren't drilled out. I shouldn't say none of them. Uh, there are a comp couple companies that CNC their brass, but mainstream brass we're just going to say it's punched and thereby it, it is always ha potentially going to have some minor errors in it now again this is going to be one of those debatable topics where people say well you know how does it really matter and um you know you're just nitpicking stuff and you're finding answers for questions nobody asked and you know what maybe i am but uh the fact of the the matter is is that it's a process that i believe in and i think it makes a difference uh and in the ever uh, quest of mine to uh, eliminate variables as much as possible uh, for the uh, smallest amount of in time invested and energy invested. I think that truing up your flash holes is a good one. It only has to be done once, you know, just when you get brand new brass. And really all I'm trying to do is true up this top part. I don't drill my flash holes. There are tools for that. That's not something that I do and, and I know there are people who test it and believe in it uh, but I just want to kind of true up this this exit here now this part will largely be good um, because the punch is driving through it but your top side can be a little erratic at times and what can happen is you might end up with little burrs and they're very small I mean I, I'm not saying these are giant dangling chads of any kind but uh, you end up with inconsistencies. It might be more beveled on one side and a little bit erratic here. And all I want to do is just make sure that when that flash comes through, that it has sort of this perfect ability to cone out uh, because it will ultimately be sideways, you know, so like my powder is probably more like this, right? And I want I want the, the flash to have the best path across that powder as fast as possible. And... If there are inconsistencies in the brass, then, you know, honestly, you could get just a slightly different ignition when the brass is is here versus maybe I turn, put it in the in the chamber this way or this way or this way. How does it really know and, and where is my optimal, you know, kind of exit for that flash? As a result, I just want to true them up. And, and what I do is I use the 21st century uh, flash hole tool. Now, there are some other tools on the market, um, you know, there's plenty of different tools that'll do this. Some use a, a collet where it allows you to adjust the depth and then you lock the collet, which stops on the neck. Uh, I, I'm not a huge fan of those. They work fine for what they cost and these aren't horribly expensive as it is. Um, but I really like the 21st century because you cannot over chamfer this area. And that's because it's, it's made in a way that it sort of has a built-in stop. Uh, you would have to really be doing something wrong to to get any more out of this so uh what you do is you just put it in now it self aligns with the flash hole uh that's one of the things i really like about the 21st century i've used some other tools where they don't align as easily and you're hunting for that hole in the dark and uh just not my thing i you know i just want to get it in and start working it so uh it's got this kind of rotating collar on it and then your system turns within it. Now it can certainly be put in some kind of a screwdriver, um, you know, impact driver, whatever you wanna do. I just like doing it by hand. I can go in, I can just feel it, just taking ever so little out. 
um, and it's almost impossible to see sometimes depending on the piece of brass that you are, are doing it to. But uh, it's very quick and simple and you only have to do it one time. Now I did about 400 pieces of brass uh, watching not even the first half of a football game just sitting there. And, you know, this gives you an idea of kind of what comes out of there. Um, it's just, you know, occasionally a little chunk here or there. Sometimes it's really fine. Sometimes it's coarser. But, you know, again, uh, we are we are talking minutia with this one, and, and I'm not trying to make light of it. I mean, you can even call manufacturers, and, uh, you know, like Peterson will tell you, and I shoot Peterson brass right now, and Peterson will tell you um, that, that according to their testing, uh, you can actually damage the flash hole and increase your SDs. Now, I will tell you, just shooting virgin brass the other night, um, without an even tuned load, I shot 25 rounds with an ES of about 20, I think 19 or 20, and an SD of just over 7, which is right in my starting range that I'm okay with. So, uh, I am still a believer that it helps me. Now, I think that also has to do with your tools that you choose. I do think that if you're using the wrong tool, you can definitely bugger up the flash hole way too much, uh, you know, by over grinding it and stuff like that. So, I mean, I, I do think there are limits to what you do in there, but I've had people ask, I thought I would just do a quick video on it. I also have a couple video or a couple of stills here that I'm going to show you that, uh, are taken inside the brass before and after using this tool. And I think that really helps show you, um, not necessarily like any big dangling chads here or anything, uh, but you get to see how the brass is inconsistent and how this just creates a nice trued up surface there. So uh, there you go. Uh, if it's a project, you know, a, a process that works for you, great. If it's not something that you want to get into, that's fine too. I uh, just wanted to show you guys and hope it helps somehow. Here's what we have inside a piece of brass. So this is looking obviously coming down from the neck. Here is the actual flash hole going to the primer pocket. And then you can see that there is a, a little bit of a bevel here. And then around it, you've got this, you know, chatter and, and whatnot on this side. And then it's smooth over here. And then you've got this kind of cornice or lip hanging out over here a little bit. So very inconsistent around the uh, hole here. And you can even see, if you look around, you'll see this is probably the impact mark from their internal die, the top half of the punch that comes down and you know clearly not centered up where it should be, which I don't know, maybe that's where this chatter came from. Anyway, you know, point being, whether this does or doesn't have a major impact, uh, I just like to know that it's all smoothed up and trued up. So let's take a look at the next photo. That's gonna give you a good example of what it looks like after the tool has been. This is what it looks like after the tool's been inside. You can see, um, I know there's some glare over here, but um, trust me, when I rotate this, it all looks the same. You can see here, top and bottom, it's all very smooth through this area here. Um, definitely trued up a little bit better. And again, this is very, very minor impact uh, that it's had, but to me, it's important, and it's very little time involved for what potentially could be a good return on a single shot somewhere. And no matter how many times I reload this particular brass, I don't have to redo this. So um, again, the return on investment for me is, is pretty good. And that's why I believe in doing it. If this was a process that I had to do every single time, or if the inside of this uh, was somehow being deformed quite a bit, you know, we'd have to reevaluate the process and kind of figure out what to do at that point. But as it stands, it's very simple, uh, very easy to do. It's a fairly inexpensive tool. And, uh, you know, again, it just, uh, I guess at the end of the day, it just helps me sleep better. So uh, if that's something you want to get into, this is what you're going to be doing to it. And I hope it helps. Talk to you guys next time.